Awesome. So welcome, everybody. Uh, for this session, uh, we called it So You Want to Be a Drupal Rock Star. And we're not going to talk like techie stuff. What we really want to talk about is customer experience and how these people on stage here that are sitting really close together so they don't fall off the stage um, have transformed their organization um, and transformed the way that their customers, whether they're internal or external, um, inter interface with their brand, uh, with their processes, and and such. So I want to introduce everybody, and I have to look at my little notes that I, I took here. So we'll start with Sabu at the end, and I'm going to try and say your last name, Hara Haran. All right, we'll get that. All right, so Sabu is a project lead and architect at Princess at Sea, which is a Princess Cruises uh, guest portal on their ships. Um, he also oversees the architecture of new crew applications, supporting food and beverage services, um, like the room service and kitchen management systems. Um, next, we have David Belades, lead product development for Comcast Connected Health for better of two decades. Um, now helping businesses, or he's been helping businesses like publishing, media, and now the health industry make a transition to digital product development and delivery. Welcome, David. Thank you. And next, we have Kyle Frost. Kyle has jetted in uh, from halfway around the world, from Australia. Uh, works for uh, a company called um, Flight Center Travel Group, which is not a big name. I hadn't heard of it, but man, this company is an $18 billion company. Uh, managing 40 brands around the world. So this is not an insignificant little company and a name that you may know here is Liberty Travel. Um, so welcome, Kyle. Um, then we have Brandon. Brandon is a web marketing director at Visit Baltimore. So part of the reason we're all here today is because of Brandon. Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> So he's responsible for the Baltimore.org website and everything connected to it, including the creation of content and the pages and updating the imagery and, and all that jazz. And then lastly, we have Lisa. Lisa's Director of Administration for Paige, Wolfberg, and Worth, also known as uh, w PWW. <laughs> um, and she's going to tell us about their firm. They have a unique business that um, has to do with EMC, EMS um, uh, law and training and, and everything with that goes on with that. And so, welcome everybody. And let's give our rock stars a huge <laughs> applause. <Woo! laughs> All right, cool, and I lost my, my cool rock star thing here, dang. That's so important, right? It keeps us in the mood. All right, let's start by introducing your organization, right? I want to uh, let everyone know just sort of what your company does and who your customers are. Who is it that you are thinking about when you are um, designing your um, <coughs> digital experience? So we have one microphone, unfortunately, so we have to kind of like play past the mic. But why don't we start with Sabu? Can you hear me? OK. So uh, hi, everyone. So I work for Princess Cruises, as we introduced. And we have 18 cruise ships. And uh, we are serving 1.7 million passengers. So what we do for Princess, what I do for Princess and my team here, so we build the customer portal for uh, all the guests traveling with us, as well as uh, the crew, crew applications to support the customers. So the, the, we build the application mainly for our guests, and then partially our main objective is also to make an application which works for the crew to support the guest. Um, what we do in a variety of uh, ways right from the guest personal devices to uh, digital signages, printed newsletters, uh, as well as you know their uh, room service in every interaction they have. Drupal plays a uh, role and uh, our application plays a role. It's a suite of applications that we work with. And the customers being using the application is the major goal for us. And the next part is helping the crew members use this application and promote our, us with the customers. That's the only way we can succeed. And um, so we have breakfast ordering through our application uh, and the crew application that helps delivery of breakfast. So we, in fact, do 400 to 500 breakfasts in the morning every day. So such things of application that we help, we have operational operational supporting tools that we support. So we think um, 
the crew members, the shipboard management who we need to uh, support so that they can help the customer have a better cruise experience, a uh, travel experience. So those are our customers. Great, thanks. David? Thank you. Hi, my name is David Belade. I work for Comcast. Perhaps some of you have heard of Comcast. We're a small media technology telecommunications company. We do about $60 billion a year in business. Uh, and I work for a very small team uh, called Strategic Development. And our focus in Strategic Development is to act as a sort of a skunk works or a, an incubator for new business ideas for Comcast. And right now, the team that I'm on, we're working on uh, seeing how we can leverage our uh, core assets, technology, um, uh, internet, and uh, information to help hospitals and insurers uh, provide services to people in their home uh, to extend what they call the continuum of care from hospital to home. Cool. So, yep, my name's Kyle. I think, Steve, you did a good introduction to what Flight Centre Travel Group is, but I'll, um, I'll continue to uh, talk about um, what I do. So, um, I guess I manage about uh, up to 90 websites across the globe at the moment. We've got 40 brands. Um, the, um, the way that we work is that our 40 brands all have a different customer experience across each of the brands, so that makes things, reusing things across different sites quite hard, especially from a usability point of thing. Um, my job has been able to, um, was to basically build a platform for each of these brands to leverage um, as much as possible their um, products and information and forms and all that type of stuff. Um, to a point where they can customise it. So um, I have about 40 Drupal devs at the moment um, because of that high uh, lack of governance across the brands and the, and the way that they work. So each side has their own team and each team has their own developer. So um, it's been a challenge. Um, but what we do is um, we work with a whole bunch of um, different levels of customer. So we've got the end user customer who interacts with uh, the sites, makes inquiries um, around travel and does their booking. We have our internal sites builders, we call them, not the actual um, site developers, the site builders, people who build out the campaign pages and all the tools that use Drupal. We have our consultants, so they're the people who receive the inquiries from, from the websites. Um, and then we've got our marketing team. So I've got multiple, multiple customers that I need to um, make happy, and it's, it's a bit of fun. But yeah, that's me. And um, as Stephen said, I work for uh, Visit Baltimore. Um, we are the official convention visitors bureau for, um, for the city of Baltimore. Um, our job is to um, bring leisure travelers to Baltimore and to um, bring meetings and conventions into this facility here. Um, it's, um, so, so we serve a dual purpose. We have a meetings and convention side that deals with meeting planners. So they come to our site to get information on the facilities and all the members. Uh, we have 750 members um, that are a part of the Visit Baltimore team, or uh, part of the Visit Baltimore network, uh, comprised of hotels and restaurants and um, all these small little um, um, retail establishments in Baltimore. Um, so every member has a presence on our website. They have profile pages, um, which need to be updated and maintained. Uh, a lot of imagery, a lot of um, uh, video clips that um, get put up onto the site. Um, so the Drupal platform really you know, helps us to manage, manage all that. Um, yeah. Cool. I'm Lisa with Paige, Wolfberg & Worth. We're the National Emergency Medical Services Law Firm. Um, we have two sister companies, PWW Media and um, NAC, the National Academy of Ambulance Coding, Inc. Our websites are all built on Drupal. Uh, it started with an e-commerce issue that we needed to address with our registration. We run a number of conferences and products initially through the law firm, and now they've been broken out through PWW Media. And through NAC, we are an education company where we provide online and live trainings and an LMS service. And as director of administration, unfortunately, IT falls under that. And anything it, nobody else wants to do, so I get to do the IT part of it as well. Nice. Why do you hold on for that? Um, so I'd like to start off um, by thinking back at what the pain point or the struggles, the challenges that you had sort of pre-Drupal? Like what were the things that really got things moving and got the gears turning on, on we need to make something happen here? You wanna 
Who wants to start with that? Brendan? Uh, the pain points of our old website. Um, when I first got to visit Baltimore about five years ago, um, we were, um, I was dealing with a six-year-old website um, that, was, that was built on a, um, a, a small proprietary uh, CMS. Um, uh, when I first started there, my job was to um, start an RFP, find an, uh, find an agency to help us redo our website. Um, that whole process got pushed ahead. Um, one day I received a call from the local um, division of the FBI. Apparently our website was blasting out so much spam and, s and uh, affecting so many computers that um, the FBI called me and said, hey, if you don't shut your website down, we're gonna have some serious issues. So um, <laughs> the Miles team was able to help us um, uh, eliminate a lot of those issues um, until, we were get, until we were able to get to a point to, uh, to rebuild the website. And um, the website build was actually pushed forward because of this issue. Um, it got to a point where it was either, you know, we try and fix these issues or we, sh or we shut down the website. And um, the team that we partnered with was really, help us, uh, was really able to help us get off the ground. Um, but it was an old CMS. It was um, very convoluted, very hard to work with. And the site in general was just very um, uh, unsecure, as, as I pointed out there. So. Nice. Oh, yep. um, yeah, we, we, had a, we had an interesting piece of machinery uh, before um, Drupal come along. So we had some magical IBM Wickham um, uh, CMS that integrated with some custom crazy Java backend and the idea of that architecture was around not giving developers any power to help make decisions for the customers. It was all just focused about, uh, around just rendering content on the page, lack of touch. It's supposed to be just for the business to get in there and they can play around and put all these little queries and that was the dream that was sold. What happened was as soon as the business required a, a pivot in their, in their customer experience, um, it required months and months of work on the back end to uh, actually get that out. And by the time it did get there, they didn't even realise they requested that. So, um, <laughs> one of the I guess the pain point in is there was the lead time um, was a big issue, and I think um, that's probably one of the things that you know um, was overlooked at Flight Center Travel Group is the amount of time it takes from an idea, whether it was good or bad, most of them are bad, to actually going up to um, to the customer and actually validating that. So um, with that, the way that it was also built was quite uninspiring. So if you were a developer, and Flight Center is all about this brightness of future, you know, you got to look after your people, and then you throw them, you throw them this thing, uh, we had a very big turnover rate. So um, that's where we went to look for something a little bit more fun, a little bit more inspiring, a little bit more um, touchy-feely, I guess, because this was just a, a, a JavaScript-run engine that the business had to play with. They had no idea what they were doing, so it was it was bloody horrible. So I was glad to get off it. <laughs> so touchy-feely was one of your requirements. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Click and at least they had a system. Our problem was we didn't have a system at all. <laughs> you had no system. <laughs> So if you think about a cruise ship, it is completely disconnected from a real world. You know, when we call a cloud, there's no cloud. It's the moment people come on board the ship, they set aside their phones. You know, that's how the uh, the, na the nature was. They didn't want to rack up too much of a data charge. That happens a lot. So that's one part of the story. But there's a learned expectation that we all use our mobiles for day-to-day -day activities. Like we we engage with every customer or every company through a mobile phone. That expectation is carried over when you walk into a cruise ship as well. So we, as a company, had to provide a digital experience for the customer, and in turn, invest on that so that we'll get a lot more data. We didn't have much data. Um, uh, and there are like multiple reasons for doing this as well. A lot of the process were very manual, still are manual, right? Say, so you need, as I said earlier, you need to request for a breakfast. You need to fill out a form and then leave it out in the, in the door hanger outside. There'll be people walking around the ship, they're called the runners, who pick these cards, 400, 500 of them, manually sort it before that happens. The last one happens around three in the morning, so you could order that. And then they manually like sort it by different times, different decks, and then prepare everything and start delivering by six in the morning. The moment we brought in a digital pr platform in, they saved 90 minutes of process time. 
which means I was among 15 people, that, that's just one thing, right? So we had a huge opportunity when we started having digital platform on board. Um, the, the pain, the challenges we faced was the disconnected environment. So we had 16 and uh, no, 18 different cruise ships. Each ship is its own data center. So we couldn't run one, sh one site on the cloud and source it to the ship because there is no internet connection. So each ship had to run its own production environment for that guest. So we have 18, our, all the problems that we face is 18 times the problem. <laughs> so, and to deploy to the ship, to give updates. I mean, in fact, we have a system now. I'm very glad uh, that we have a system we release to the ships at least twice a week. And we also have built automatic rollback so that something goes wrong, it rolls back because remote uh, maintenance is very difficult in a ship environment. So we had so much challenges with that and Drupal played a huge role because Drupal is the core CMS providing data. Um, and then, um, so overall, I think we have expanded. Drupal is one part, but we do other uh, application, so applications too to help this entire process. But we are on the wave of this digital transformation. Um, so what we say is we are trying to innovate on vacation, right? Uh, to give a better experience for the cab passenger, getting more personalized. So that's all happening. Another wave is happening from um, this November where we are bringing in a lot more uh, devices and uh, machine learning, real-time decision making on board the ship, which is much more enhanced experience. This was uh, showcased in CES uh, in 2017, in January, and we are gonna launch in November. It's pretty interesting. You can see it in uh, YouTube. It's a lot more involved, and Drupal is also playing a key role there. Well, I think I got a little lucky. We weren't trying to solve an emerging problem. Uh, we didn't have an emergency. We didn't have uh, an existing site. I, what we had was an idea uh, that if we could deliver a, a high quality video, uh, educational video and uh, interactions um, into the home in support of pre-op, post-op conditions, um, then we'd be able to help you know, hospitals and insurers help their customers. Um, what we had was the need for the ability to rapidly publish sites, manage a multitude of brands and sub-brands, need the ability to um, manage content uh, centrally and then publish out to uh, different endpoints. Uh, we deliver the experience over uh, several set-top box devices, smart TVs, uh, personal mobile phones, tablets, as well as a responsive website. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to be able to create uh, an environment that was more self-service. Um, so through leveraging uh, Site Factory and Content Hub uh, by Acquia, we were able to set up an environment where, you know, relatively quickly in a matter of, um, you know, a day or two, we can stand up a whole new instance. And I can connect that instance to uh, several other uh, features as well as the content itself and then deliver that content, um, you know, anytime, anywhere. And that's uh, sort of the problem we were trying to solve. How could we create a, uh, an environment where we could enable uh, our customers to be more self-service? Um, so we've connected that to several other uh, you know, interesting pieces. Uh, we also deliver what we call virtual interaction, which is really just a WebRTC-based um, you know, virtual uh, chat for groups. So clinicians and care managers connect with patients in their homes or on their mobile devices. Um, and again, you know, when we look at a large insurer, you know, they have multiple sub-brands, each needing both localized content for the brand uh, as well as their own branding. And, and using uh, Drupal in this way, it allowed us to quickly uh, spin up and connect a lot of sites and, and manage information centrally um, and add on. It allows us to bolt on a lot of capability. We had a proprietary website, a dot .com web, or dot .net website, and we had a need to get our conference registration up and running, and our developers were in California, three hours behind us, and were unable to accommodate us, and we had a very short timeline, six weeks, to get the um, conference registration up and running, so basically we split out our e-commerce from the law firm website, because everything, all the credit cards were gonna be run through the same thing, and we built a, registration website in Drupal, um, used Dropboard's labs to do all the work for us, and it 
led into three additional websites that we worked on with them um, to address some of our other business issues. Nice. So, um, obviously you turned to Drupal as the solution of choice. If you could summarize, like, what was the core reason for using Drupal? That's what they told me to do. <laughs> <laughs> you must have a great partner. <laughs> All right. Um, for us, um, we were actually in the middle of an RFP, so um, we looked at a, a couple of other agencies, smaller agencies, um, larger, um, larger agencies, and um, the team at Miles was able to offer us a solution that was um, really visually appealing, um, that allowed me the flexibility to go in and do what I needed to do. Um, we were kind of in a, a different situation. I asked them to build the template, and then um, I went and built out all the other pages. Um, we had a really limited budget, um, and if I asked, if I would have, you know, if, if I would have had them do all the work, um, it would have been, you know, uh, it, it would have been too much for us to handle. So they were very flexible. They helped me get up and running, and um, it just, you know, flexibility, security, because that was the biggest issue for us at the time, having a secure website that wasn't, you know, broadcasting you know, spam all over the place. So, um, yeah. Cool. Um. One big thing, well, besides it being free, um, <laughs> ours, our idea, um, the biggest selling point was when we actually showed a demo to our internal um, stakeholders or internal users around how a content management system could actually work and how they could build out their pages and all that type of stuff. And then it just drove itself from there. So once they saw it and compared it to what they have, they just went, yep, we'll have one, please. That was it. <laughs> That's, that's pretty straightforward. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. I think we'd all say, you know, I had limited time, right? I had a limited budget, but I guess all of that's really relative, right? Um, probably not so limited to some, some other folks, but um, the Drupal framework itself uh, allowed us to speed up development rapidly, um, and it allowed us, again, to um, be able to create more of a self-service scenario in, in multiple underlying sites um, much more rapidly than having to roll any of that stuff you know, ourselves and the tech team. Um, you know, on top of that, I, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be working with Drupal now for nearly 10 years. So I had a lot of experience with Drupal itself. Uh, made it a natural fit um, because the rest of the, the health platform itself was loosely coupled uh, technology pieces uh, through APIs. And so, you know, I have a video management system that does transcoding and storage and playback. And you know, I feed data from that directly into Drupal, and then I feed the data out of Drupal to you know multiple other endpoints. So it, it made it a very logical um, solution for us. Again, it was a it's a solid framework. Uh, you know, we have a lot of role-based and brand-based um, privileges or permissioning or uh, provisioning, however you classify it. Uh, so again, instead of having to you know build all of that kind of capability from the ground up. Uh, we were able to leverage a lot of what Drupal has in, in place today, especially when we look at, you know, we deliver, you know, video-based content along with, you know, assessments. You know, watch this information and answer these questions. It allows us to easily package content into digestible um, chunks and uh, aggregate those chunks based on, you know, metadata that's associated with it or the content that underlies it. Uh, and again, Drupal gave us a lot of flexibility in being able to do that. I mean, I totally agree to what all they said. On top of it, it's the speed to market. Um, because what we use Drupal is not just as a content management system. It's essentially is driving uh, three things for us. One is content, of course, multilingual content. That's another advantage on Drupal. How good multilingual is, and it can make it. It's a little difficult, but it can be. It can be done. Uh, we currently support nine languages on board the ship. So to give that information for the guests for that day in their native language needed a lot of flexibility for us to push the limit of a proprietary CMS or any other application could do. And Drupal was able to do that and help us do that. So that's one thing, that speed to market. Second uh, aspect that we do is uh, communication. So when we had to create a social network on board the ship so that the passengers could chat with their uh, fellow, f uh, fellow beings like fellow friends or their uh, roommates. 
uh, families. So we had to create something that could work in a web, web environment. Uh, and Drupal, even though it's a CMS, but had the community had modules like private messaging. Uh, so we could start, we could get a head start, and people have done such similar things using Drupal. So uh, we were using Drupal to create that chat. It still works that way. It's, I'm, I'm not to say that's the best chat ever, but we, it does the job for us. It, uh, it helped us build that. So entire translation for us was done in two months on development time. The uh, messaging was again done in two to two and a half months development time uh, to integrate that. Uh, so those are the two major sections where the content and communication. Third thing came commerce. Our initial goal was not to sell uh, services or anything to the passenger. But when it came to um, a situation where we had 50% of passengers using our application, they were very comfortable with uh, using our platform. Um, and the need came to be for them to get more services like booking show excursions um, or reserving uh, the table table for restaurants or uh, the room service. Drupal still had uh, some solution that we could start with. Uh, and that that's the flexibility that, you know, the speed that we could deliver something, at, at least as a beta, for the passenger to test and improve upon. I think that's, a f that's what made Drupal work for us. Nice. What really is amazing to me is that this is one platform being used so variety of ways, you know, very versatile uh, tool that you guys are using. Uh, so a few of you have mentioned that you're working with partners. Who's, a, who's using partners? You guys? They're all using partners. Are any of your partners in the audience here? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Why don't you point them out? <coughs> sure. Go ahead. Uh, Dropboards Labs, Andrew, Chris, and Andrew. Nice. Thank you, guys. Good job. Miles Media team right there. Miles Media. Hey, guys. <laughs> Anyone else in the audience? Acquia. Acquia. Woo! And, uh, <laughs> mainly Lingotech. Lingotech, nice. Is anyone from Seregen here? No? Region. No, Seregen. Nice. Um, all right, so now we get into the last question, and then we can take some uh, audience questions and answers. The last question is, who's your favorite rock star? <laughs> Born in the USA, Bruce. Woo! Uh, Dave Grohl, Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters. Tom's too. Led Zeppelin. Yeah. For me, it's uh, Megadeth. Megadeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Mustaine. Nice. I'm v Eddie Van Halen. I, oh. You know, he's awesome, right? <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for our rock stars here? Please just come on up. They're a friendly bunch. Or maybe we covered everything. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for coming today. Really appreciate it. And thanks again for you guys for joining us on this uh, panel. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of the uh, DrupalCon. All right, thanks. <laughs>